You can just wait for it. Okay, the recording has started. All right. Uh, good morning once again. My name is Abu Bakar, and um, today our uh, morning session will be about unit testing with uh, Python. Uh, first and first, uh, in the introduction of the challenge on Monday, you saw in the folder that we have, a, I mean, in the repo that we have a folder called tests. That is, uh, that is a Python package structure to show that we have implemented a little bit of testing into the code and some of the uh, submissions that we have received, some of you have completed the testing part, you have even integrated the uh, Travis CI which is a good job. Um, so for all of us that might have a little bit of issues doing that, this session will help you um, um, do that. Okay. Um, so I'm not able to um, admit any people to um, any more trainings to join it. Um, Tutorials, can you please uh, help me do that, Cindy? Okay. Right. Um, okay, thank you. So, what is unit testing? Unit testing, as written here, is a software testing method by which individual components of software source codes are put under various tests to determine and identify bugs and whether they are fit for use. What this means is that when we write our Python codes or when we write any um, software, we have to like test them. It's just like going to um, buy and you, you order a particular product, you need to like test them first before you um, pay or you know check the package before you pay. That's like a simple like, form of testing that you could do. And then in um, software development as well, we, uh, we use um, testing to ensure that all of the written requirements are met and um, it gives what it's expected of it. It returns what we want it to return, the data type, the values it's returning, and exterior. Uh, uh, in Python, we have different modules for testing. We have the unit test, we have the PyTest, and then we have the nose. Um, the updated version, Python 3, we have the nose 3 now. The unit test is, uh, has been introduced since Python 2.1. Is um, it is built with um, the Python standard library, and then you don't need, you don't have to do uh, pip install units test. It's already embedded into the Python standard library. For the pipe test, it's uh, it's uh, it's an external um, library that you have to install before you can use it. For this particular session, we'll be going through the um, unit test, but what, um, whichever uh, method we use in unit test also applies to. By test and those tests with only simple um, modifications. Uh, as I've said earlier, unit test is built into Python standard library and it has some requirements before it runs. One of the requirements is that you put your uh, your tests into classes as methods. So what that means, which we are going to see um, later on, is that we don't we it enforces us to write our codes in a modular form. By modular, I mean that. All of our codes are, and all of our codes are embedded in uh, Python classes, and all of these classes has their different uh, methods and uh, functions. So, in, in using unit tests will allow us to do that, and then it's it's easy to integrate this into um, our codes. And then it uses a series of special assertion methods in the unit test dot test cases and the test case class instead of the built-in assert statement. From the Python knowledge that we have, uh, there is a keyword called assert, which which like checks whether a particular expression results into what we want. So we can say um, assert uh, A equals B or assert C is equals to B. And when it is true, you don't see any output in the REPL. But when it is false, you see an assertion error that says, oh, this code, um, this code uh, is not true, or this statement is not true. So in um, unit test, um, all of these are embedded, like all of the assert statements are embedded, and then it has its own built-in assert statement. One of the assert statements which you are going to see uh, later on is this assert equals, um, assert is not, assert is not, and, and a whole lot of other stuff, depending on what you want to check from your um, uh, your functions that you have written. So in writing um, the first test, we have to include the underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi file. What this does is that it allows us to build a um, 
Python modules or uh, yeah, Python modules which will then allow us to import functions from a particular Python class. This, which we are going to see when we go into the um, hands-on session, is that we it enables us to import a particular function that we have written in a particular um, code, and then we bring it into our test cases, and then we can use these functions without actually defining them into that by by uh, script. Um, how to structure a simple test. Now, before you dive into um, writing any test, you want to make a couple of decisions. Um, for instance, you want to ensure and check what you want the test to do, and then you want to write unit test or an integration test. By unit test, we mean that we are testing each component of our uh, of our functions, I mean, of our, our Python package. So when you build a particular uh, Python package, and it's expected that this package has a lot of uh, functions. So all of these functions needs to be tested. And that is what unit test allows us to do. It allows us to test um, if this function if this function is called, will it give what is required? If this function is called, will it accept the um, data type that we want it to accept? Say for instance, the function has an, um, an argument and then we are passing in the wrong argument, what will be the output? So we are testing all of these cases to ensure that we have what we require that we have what we require and then um, we have the integration test what the integration test does is that it ensures um can you, can you guys still hear me yes we can hear you okay Please. i have okay i have my left side what's going on okay Okay, and then in the integration test ensures that um, you will be able to check how this function relates to the next function and how each component of your Python package relates to other components of your Python package, which means that if a particular function is dependent on the output of a particular function, integration test ensures that there is a smooth integration between this component and this component. So you'll be able to like do a broad check of what your Python package does, while the unit test ensures that you check each component of your Python um, functions. Then the structure of the, Python, uh, of the test should follow this workflow. First thing is you want to create an input. Um, secondly, you want to um, execute the code being tested, that's like you call the function that you have defined, and then you store the output. And then thirdly is you compare the output with an expected result. So you already know what your function is supposed to return, and then you will like say what is supposed to return in the particular variable called um, return. And then when you call the function that you have defined in another Python, uh, another Py file, you expect it to perform what is required and then give you what is required. So you check this and ensure that it gives you the same thing. If it is wrong, then you get an error saying, this function, I mean, this function is not returning what you want it to return, and then you know how to debug and you know how to fix it. Uh, some of the advantage of units um, using Python units test is it helps you to detect bugs early in the development cycle. This means that when you develop um, a, a particular Python package, and as you are developing it, and then you are adding the test um, um, test framework to it, you would be able to detect if the function is actually working the way you want it, and if it is wrong, you see while I was preparing this, there was a lot of back and forth with um, developing the, uh, testing the functions, and because I was using uh, unit test, I was able to like, debug it on a very fast um, level, and then it helps you to write better programs. Because you use unit test, it forces you to write modular code, and modular code means that you get, um, you, you, you'll be able to like, uh, your code will be available for global use and then it's uh, it's industry standard you follow the per page standard and a whole lot of other stuff um, regarding writing um, standard codes and then it signs easily with other testing methods and tools so even if you are not using unit testing you can use pi test you can use node test you can use j unit all of this when you use unit test it will be easy for you to integrate them and use them and then there is the travis ci so when you use the unit test uh, all of this um, continuous integration tools like the Travis CI, the GitHub Actions, the Jenkins, they, they have uh, easy implementations when you use uh, Python units testing. So you can easily set it up and then you run your check automatically once you make a new push or there's a new pull request and, uh, and some other uh, 
stuff regarding um, updating your codes. Then it will help uh, reduce the number of bugs that you have because you have implemented unit tests. All the bugs you you would encounter or that your customer might encounter when you um, open source this codes would be you would have experienced it first and and then you will have debugged it so you have less complaint and then you have a good review and feedback from um, customers as well and then it is easier to modify in future with less consequence so when you develop codes with five uh, unit tests you you would be able to tell what this function is doing and how you have defined it and then when there's like a new change probably if, um, there is a new upgrade to python and then you want to upgrade your python code then it will be easy for you to understand what it is doing and how you can go about it and that is all for this slide now we'll move on to the uh, answer session if you have any question i'll be the right time to ask them um do you have any questions so far um any questions can we go on to the answer session okay okay uh um, in the thursday folder you will see the file Where is it? Okay. you will see the file okay I'm sure you see a folder called day four. So if you have um, copied this or you've downloaded it, you would get a um, test folder and an init file and then a case1.py file. Can you confirm if this is true? So we go to. Yeah, we would, um, would have. Um, Let's see how this session goes. If we don't have any more questions, we can move on to showing how Travis CI works and how we can integrate it. Okay. I just want to explain how you write your own test case. Okay. Okay. So let me get my VS code to open this. Okay. okay. I'm just going to. Okay, I believe you can see my uh, screen and it's not blurry. Can you see the codes? Can you see the codes? All right. So I'm in the day four folder. Um, we have the case one. So this is, uh, these are Python codes that are written to test how um, test works, how unit testing works in Python. We have a function called uh, dev um, find average. So this function is supposed to find the average of an input list. Uh, let's see if I can easily do that now. Okay, so you can see this, right? All right. So we have we have written this functions to uh, return the average, and then there's another function to return an uh, a dictionary which counts the occurrence of uh, occurrence of values in in a particular list. So these are functions that we have written, and then it's inside a file called case one. In case one, in our test folder, we have um, we have what we call test case one. In test case one, this is the format at which you write your uh, test cases. You have to start with a uh, test underscore, then the name of what you want to uh, what you want to name it. I mean, the file name. So because we have started with test underscore, it will be easy for us to like 
test the um, input and then see um, the output and check whether the function works the way we want it to work. Okay. So I've written um, four test cases. One of them is this particular class, this first class, is testing for the first function called find average. And then the second class is testing for the um, count occurrence. Um, and the first uh, test case is checking the return type and the return value. And then the second um, test is checking for the input type. So if we have like, um, So, so the first one for the test occurrence also is checking the return as well, and while the second is checking for the um, return type. The, the predefined function that I mentioned earlier is this. So I'm, 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 I'm inheriting from the... Can keep a second. So, oh, it's not visible here. You can see it here, or maybe I should um, increase. Um, changing the the background for VS Code is uh, will take will take me some time to do it now. So let me just know if you can see it. Can, is it is it visible now? Can you see it now? Ah, okay, okay. So let's just continue. So the first, so you also have this file, so you can like open it on your system and just follow through what I um, say. So we import unit test and we import the system and OS. The major reason why we import this is for us, is for us to have easy um, access extending our um, test case that we have before, which is uh, the test case one, I mean case one, the pi file. So we have two classes here because we are testing two functions and then we are testing two um, tests, um, two edge cases. The first one is we are testing what it is what it returns. It is equal to what we want. So because we have inherited um, the test unit test uh, test case class, that would enable us to use the assert equal. So this assert equal belongs to the uh, unit test um, Python module, and that's why we are using the self, which I'm sure you are familiar with now if you have gone through um, the one and the two uh, exercise. Uh, we have the input data, which is, you know, when I was explaining the steps at which you use to build a structure, you want to create your input, then execute the code, and then compare the output. And when you look at this, we are creating the input here, then we are testing the code by calling find average. If you notice, we have not defined any find average in all of this. We have only import find average from case one. And case one is the .py file that we have before. And then we are passing in the, uh, the input, which is the argument. So we're passing in the data that we have defined here, and then we are comparing the output, which is this, which is, which is stored in the return, and then what is expected. So it, it is expected that for us to find the average between 1, 2, and 3, it's supposed to return 2.0. So if results, if the output of find average of data that is stored in the results, if it is not equal to 2, we get an assertion error, okay? And then if it is equal to two, we get um, we, we get uh, a pass statement which tells us that this Python um, function returns what is expected. And then the second edge case for find average is we are testing the input um, argument. So we are testing the argument if it is true. I mean, if it's what we, ex um, if it is what we, uh, if it is what we expect, so it's, we are expecting to get either a list, a set, or a tuple. So if we don't get any of this, we raise an assertion um, error. It says um, the type um, is not, um, the, uh, the input that we are getting is not what we uh, what is required or what we want. So we raise this error, and then that prevents any break in our um, code. And then we know our code is doing what we want it to do. Um, the second edge case, and um, the second function we are testing is the count occurrence, which is also defined in case one. Uh, we have the test occurrence class, and then you can see it's also inheriting from the unit test. Uh, we are testing the return, so we have defined the input, we have called the function, 
and then this is the output and then we are comparing the output with the input so if the output which is stored in result is different from what we expect we release an uh, an error an assertion error that is not equal and then we go back to fix the code that means probably our function is not working the way we want it and then we have the same thing checking the input so if the input is not a, a dictionary then erase a type error of uh, of this kind okay that is uh, what we have for for the test cases and this is where we have defined the test uh, cases i hope it is clear can you see it okay let's see if we have questions okay um any questions so far is it clear how the structure looks like? I really wish I can easily change the background. I recently changed it. I'm not sure I can change it easily now. Ah, nice. Okay. So. Okay. Oh, it looks great. Okay. Is it visible now? Let me, let me go back and check if we have questions. All right. So since there are no um, any other questions, do you guys have any questions? Is everything clear? Is it clear? Do you have um, questions? Okay, all right, cool. Uh, and this is a strong. Okay, so let's go to. Yeah, okay. What if we want to add in this multiple files? Do we want to? Do we? Okay, so it is advisable that you use uh, multiple um, files. So, for instance, I could have, uh, instead of instead of using this instead of using just test case one i can go and say and um, test find average and then i define a new one i call it test um, count occurrence everything will be stored inside my test folder and then when i come to my um, terminal i can easily um, run it by saying uh, python i'm not sure i'm inside the folder i'm just going to the folder um, Okay, we are in it now. So let's go. Let's go into the test folder, and then let's run it. And do Python. We do Python and uh, unit test, and then we write the name, which is test case one. And then I'm not sure I've configured this to run, but let's see. Yeah, I've not. I've not configured it to run. So I'm just I'm, I will have to use my terminal to make it run. And my terminal is black. So I'm not sure what to do, but I'm going to try and increase the font. Can I do that? Oh, I'm afraid I can't increase the font. Uh, this is not so clear. But bear with me. Now, uh, mm, so, yes. so we can do Python. I think um, unit test. So it means we want to run a unit test um, package and then we have to point to where it is and then we see it's test case one then we run it we get uh, an error which says no module named case one how is that possible can i change anything let's see we have, we have error in, at our hand oh. really? okay 
I have changed the code. So let me see if this will work out. Okay, so uh, it's run, it's failed, run one test and then it's failed. That's because uh, a start almost equals results. Did I change anything? Uh, since the function is misguided, let me just check it again. Okay, so the error is this. And then we'll check it again. Uh, so the test runs successfully. You can see the OK sign here. Before we add the field, it says there's an error in our code and then it points to me where the error is. It says there's a deprecation in the um, value function that I was using and then it's advised me to use assert almost equal. And before I was using assert um, almost equals. So with an S, now without the S, it runs successfully and then you can see it runs four tests and then when you come here, when you count it, we have one, two, three, four. And that's why you can see the four test here. Okay? Is it clear? Yes, um, you can run the unit test on Python. Uh, you can run the entire code on Python, right? But you know, I've, I've specified that whenever this uh, whenever this class is called test uh, case one, it should run the unit test module. So whatever you do by running the Python, you will still be running the unit test uh, module. So as I remove this, then you can run the code to see if you check for syntax error or any form of error that you might have. Okay. Then, uh, have I answered your question, Dan? And um, Deborah, is it clear now? Okay, what about that? Ah, okay, cool. Any other questions? Uh, I think we might not have any other questions. So while we wait for any other question, Kevin, please let me know if there are other questions. Uh, let me go do a walkthrough of the of the Twitter data analysis that we are working on, and then we have the uh, test. That's what we're doing, and then we have the test extra data frame. Many of you guys have implemented uh, the test, which is amazing. Uh, you have even used uh, Travis CI to do it, which is cool. Uh, so. What this test is doing is we have all of these functions that we have written in fixed extract data frame that is expected of you to fix. And then after you fix it, this test will help you check if you have if you have um, if you have successfully fixed it and then it's returning what you want. Um, some of the submissions that we have seen is that they have success they integrated test um, Travis CI and then it's it's uh, the test ran successfully, which means all the functions they wrote is correct and um, some of you integrated with Travis CI but it's still failing we have advice for you to um, refix it so we, we use a lot of um, assert equal to check the output and majorly we are just checking the output this is just on a uh, simple basis if we are doing on a standard uh, basis we would like check the input um, check the return type and check many other um, things that we have to check just to ensure that we have a um, working uh, module, so to say. Uh, do you guys have any questions regarding this test file? Is it clear? Okay. So what, what, what do you get then when you run the test? Do you get an error? Okay, it runs successfully, okay. The, okay, you mean you run the test for the Twitter um, data analysis, and then all you have to do now is integrate with um, Travis here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, okay, while well, we wait for the hand to return, uh, I think we still have okay, we still have a twenty six minutes. Let's see if we can set up a um, Travis CI for our repo. Our the repo we have already has Travis CI, so I'm just going to 
do a walkthrough. So all you have to do is uh, go to Travis CI, Travis, not Travis Scott, no, Travis CI, login. So I just, I just, I think we're using dot com now. Yeah, it's not com. Is it? Is that the org is uh, duplicated and then they are working on it or something like that. So um, it is advised, it is advised that you sign up with your GitHub account. So because when you do that, you have a lot of access to um, set up your um, your GitHub project to integrate and uh, Travis CI into it. And then because I already have a sign, I mean, I've already signed up, what you have to do is just sign up with your GitHub account. And then it's, it's integrate, it integrates with your GitHub account and all of it is fixed. So I'm, I'm just going to sign in. Yeah, I'm signing with GitHub. This is what you would do to um, set up Travis CI. Travis is a continuous integration uh, platform and it helps you continually test your code. So when you write your code, when you write this type of code and then you have all of these um, test cases and probably it's now big and you can't be running the, you can't and manually test the code again, you need to like use a continuous integration tools to help you to set it up. Um, this is currently uh, failing, and the major reason why it's failing is because we have removed the actual extract data frame from this file, and then we are telling it to look for the, if you look at the Travis.yaml file, we are telling it to look for the test extract data frame, and test extract data frame is not present. If we go into detail as to why it is failing, you will see, you will see that it's failing, uh, where is it? Um, because we have not provided this into it, okay? Uh, which we are going to do. All of the functions are not complete, right? So, which is what you guys are supposed to do and then it's supposed to pass. Uh, just before we get here, I'm not sure we can. So let's assume I have a GitHub repo and go back to my GitHub page. After just stay here. So this is the data. Okay. So when you successfully integrate and try to see that into your repo, you have this sign. This sign means it is failing, and when it's not failing, you have this checkbox, right? Uh, for you to do that, I think I was saying already. What is Okay, for you to do that, you have you have your dashboard, and then in your dashboard, you can use. Okay, you come to uh, settings, and then you can sign account. So in your settings, you can sign accounts. Then say, uh, probably you have like probably belong to an organization, and then you want to add that organization into your Travis CI because you are creating a particular packet and then you want to integrate continuous testing into it, you can do that here. Um, you can click on manage repository to add more repository to your uh, to your um, GitHub. Okay, so because I have successfully installed, so before you get to this stage, once you sign your account, you get access to a lot of your repository and then you can easily add install Travis here to that repository now this is what I have done in my case you get a page like this I can switch accounts to go into some of the other accounts that I belong to and if you belong to some of the uh, other organizations on your github you can easily get this as well uh, you can just click on if you are selecting all your repository that means you want to install Travis here to all your repository just approve and install I'm not doing that I just click on select repository and then I come here and then I select all of the repository that I need or one of the repositories that I need. For my case, I've used the, the feature um, eng. But this is a new uh, a repository from uh, all my GitHub and then I just approve and install. And once that is done, um, I have to uh, let's see. Can I, okay, you have to come to plan. I think yeah. You have to come to plan if you can decide to upgrade depending on what you are working on but i'm currently using the free plan and then i have this number of credits i've used um 380 of the ten thousand that they have given me uh, i can decide to so you, you have to click on the uh, credit plan and then activate it when you once you do that 
your build will be ready before if you didn't do that you get errors that say uh, build not found when you push you get an error saying build not found and then it's it's directly communicates with the email that is associated with your github and then you get uh, notifications when your build successfully passed or when it fails and then you can decide to activate all the using uh, github apps and do a lot of other stuff here and then you can check your um, plan usage here to check how busy you have been on um, implementing the Travis CI tweet. Uh, and, and that's about that's that that's that. Once you integrate the GitHub repository to your file, you get the repo here. I mean to your Travis, you get the repo here and when you click on it, um, this is successfully parsing now. We have integrated a simple uh, init test into it as well, and then you can see some of the um, actions into it and then the time it took to run. You can restart the build here if it fails and you, you probably have changed something that, um, that you notice of or why it is failing. It automatically connects to the main um, branch, but if you have created some other branch, you can um, set it up here and say, oh, you don't want it to um, run the test for the main branch, you want it to you want for the um, probably the fixed bug branch or the uh, make unit test branch. So you, you can change that here. You can check the build history here to see how many times you are running and then it failed. For me, I run it here and it failed. And then after that, it successfully passed. And then you can check the pull request that you have. And there are no pull requests for this uh, repo yet. And then you should get the build parsing on it. And then when you go back to your repo for where this is residing, uh, can I go back here? I think. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. I just integrated with um, the branch. Okay, and this is what you get once you integrate it. All you have to do is make sure you set up the all the requirements. And by the requirements, I mean you have a file structure that looks like this. You have probably your package name here, and then you have a folder called test, and then all your tests can be inside this. And if you have many, 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 you don't have to include all of the tests into a particular um, PyS script. You can split it and just, all you have to do is make sure it starts with test underscore and then the file name. And you can have multiple tests into it. Okay? And let me go back and check if there are questions. I can't configure a Travis Journal script to run on that script if it test passes. Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, let me show you. Let me show you the. Okay. Uh, there's a Travis YAML file that is attached to this repo here. Uh, maybe you can see my screen very clearly. Yeah. Okay. So there's a Travis YAML file that is attached to the repo that you have um, cloned. This. Since this is black, you might not see it. So this is what it looks like. The language that which you so you there are lots of um, parameters that you can specify in your Travis YAML file. Just remember, it has to start with dots. Look at the name here. It has to start with dot Travis dot YML. So it's called um, the Travis YAML file. Um, you can specify the language at which you are writing the code. In my case, it's uh, Python, and then I'm building for all of this Python. Uh, all of these Python versions. So we have the 3.9, 3.8, 3.7, 3.6. What this means is that it will create um, a virtual environment where Python 3.6 is installed, 3.7 is installed, 0.8 and 0.9, and then it will test all of my test cases there. And then if any of these fails, you see the option. I mean, you see why it, it is failing. Probably you have used a particular function that is not ready in Python 7. In Python 3.7 and then it's ready in Python 3.9. So 3.9 might pass for that part and 3.7 would fail. And then you see that and then you'll be able to like debug it and probably use the function that is available there. So this is just like to give more room into different users because the more uh, Python extension you have, uh, the better or the the more globally, um, the more the people would uh, use your package, right? And uh, then we have a requirements and the txt file it is also included in the folder here. A requirement so the requirement of txt file means that you need to install 
all of this into the um, virtual environment that it will create for your Travis or Tiano file. So once it creates all of this, it needs to install all of this, okay? And then in all of this, we have the text blob library, we have the pandas, and many others. So if your Python function is using more than, um, if your Python module is using more than um, specified here, then it might be failing. So you have to like come and include them here. And if you check the build, if you check the build history, you will be able to, if you check the build history, you'll be able to like debug um, why it is failing and why it is passing, okay? Um, they made um, everything easy. Okay, so it will install all of this. First of all, and once that is done, uh, I am caching it here just because I don't want it to. For every time I push, I don't want it to start reinstalling. So, for instance, if I'm making uh, if I'm making a big change to my Python um, to my Python uh, package, then this might give me error. Probably I have included a new library and I have not included a library. I mean, I've included the library in my requirement.txt file, but because I have cached this here, I might be getting an error because the, it's, it has not successfully installed that new library into this um, virtual environment that it has um, created here. And when that is done, that means your environment is ready to run and all of that. And then you just do Python, I mean, M, like I have done here. Uh, there you yeah, so you just do Python, I mean, and you need test, and then you say test. What this test means is look for a folder called tests, and then in that folder, look for a file called this, okay? What this means is you have successfully made um, test extract data for a module, and then you are importing it into the test files, and then that's why you can um, use it. Yeah, the, the recording will be available. Yeah, the recording will be We are recording it and it will be available. Okay. Um, and this is how you run it. So this is how you set up your Travis YAML file. This is like the basic way you can set up your Travis YAML file. There's a lot of other um, arguments and parameters that you can provide for this Travis YAML just to make it um, standard. And that is how it's run. So it's, it will come into this file and then it runs all the tests in this place all of this and if any of the test is failing it tells you why it's failing and um, what you need to do to fix it have i have i answered your question um milky i hope i pronounce that right yes so if you have multiple test file and all of these test files are inside a folder called test all you have to do is probably you have a new one called test um, clean switch data frame you have to just come here and do uh, fin and then you do Python, Python, hyphen n, and it's test, test, dot, you know, test, clean, what's it called again? Clean, tweets, data free. Yeah, just like that. And then it runs this, and then it runs this as well. Okay, you want to. Uh, I don't get the question. You want to run if that particular test passes. If not, then continue on to other test. Um, I, I I think that um, you can set um, um, dependency dependency or or even else statement. I I've not tried. I've not tried um, running a test when one fails, then run this one. I've not tried that out yet, but I'll like research it and then I'll get back to you. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll um, if I find anything, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, any other questions? I believe it's easy for every one of us to go and integrate um, Travis or file into. I mean, to integrate Travis into our repo now, and then when you submit now, we should see a green checkbox on your repo. Um, any other questions? Do you understand what I've been saying since? Mm. The chat window is kind of silent. What is saying anything? Okay. But the milky. All right. Thank you.
a quick recap. Huh. All right. Um, what was explained is that well, you can get the recap on the recorded video. But what was explained is that this is how you set up a Travis. You just do Travis. You log into your Travis. Make sure you sign, if you have not signed up, make sure you sign up with your GitHub. And once you do that, integrate your Python repository. Oh, sorry, the GitHub repository into um, Travis. And uh, if you once you do that, you come to. I need to go back to it. You go to uh, say you are here. You need to set up so things. You activate the plan first of all. Once you do that, you that means you are ready for build and. Um, that means you're ready to start building your uh, Python packages. And when you have that, let's come back to this one that is failing. And when you have that, you, like check the error and see what is going on and why. If it is failing. And then I showed you how you would install Travis into your repository. Once you click on that link, it allows you to select which repository you want. As you may click on this. And then I can just say approve and install, but I don't really want to integrate Travis to that. And Feature Inc. already has Travis CI integrated into it. And then you get something like this. And next time you push an update to your repo, it kickstarts the build and then it runs the check. Uh, can we get out why this is failing? No. Uh, Okay, so this is giving us a lot of error why it is failing. You can see error, 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 error. It means some of these functions that you have defined are not well defined and then you need to fix them. And that's why they are all failing. And then you see done, your build exited with one. If it successfully passed, you see your build exited with zero. Okay. But since this failed, you see your build exited with uh, one. Let's look at this at first. I don't want to compare. Okay, you see, done your build exited with uh, zero, and then this is the command that was run. Right? Okay. I want to integrate to this song and it's failed because I keep it too much wrong. Too hard to run. I I think that there is an option that where you can uh, auto run for for you to get more clarity into that. Um, read the uh, read the documentation for um, Travis CI, and then I'm sure you get a lot of insights as to how you can auto run, and probably Milky will also get some ideas as to how to uh, ensure that a particular function runs if this fails, or how a particular test runs if this fails. Okay. Okay, um, that is the end of my presentations. If you have any other question, please um, ask on the tutorial channel and then we'll be happy to help you. We'll be happy to help out. All right. Okay, thank you, everyone. And then to enjoy the rest of the day.